Verily, all praise is for Allah. We praise Him and seek His aid and His forgiveness. And we seek refuge of Allah from the evils of ourselves and our evil actions. Whomever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide them. And whomever Allah misguides, there is none who can guide them. And I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone, having no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. I would first like to extend my apology as I do not have much experience in public speaking, nor am I a sheikh or imam. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala untwist my tongue and expand my chest so that you can understand me and guide us all to the straight path and protect us from shirk innovations and anything that takes us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today I'll be addressing not the symptoms of the disease, but the cause and the solution. Now I'd like to read the hadith for you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is near that the nations will call one another against you, just as the eaters call one another to their dishes. Somebody asked, is this because we will be few in numbers on that day? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, no, but that day you shall be numerous, but you will be like the foam of the sea, and Allah will take the fear of you away from your enemies, and will place weakness into your hearts. Somebody asked, what is this weakness? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, the love of this world and the dislike of death. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing more heartbreaking, nothing more upsetting, and nothing more angering than seeing our family, our ummah, being humiliated and massacred across the world in this prison of a dunya. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Muslim ummah is like one body. If the eye is in pain, the whole body is in pain, and if the head is in pain, then the whole, body, the whole ummah feels it. I am sure this is why many of you are here today. The pain is a deep pain, a pain that stabs through the heart as we watch our ummah become victims of white phosphorus, Depleted uranium, drone attacks, bullet shots, and even rape. From Sister Fatima, who was repeatedly raped and abused in Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq, to four-year-old Ad, four-year-old Azal Arara, who was paralyzed in four limbs after being shot by Israeli soldiers in his village in East Jerusalem on Wednesday. These are just two examples of millions. Now, I'd like to pose two questions to you all today. The first is: Do we deserve victory? over our enemy who openly and willingly massacre our families on a daily basis with their weapons of mass destruction and their unmanned drones. One may ask why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not answer all of our du'as, why he does not give us victory and answer the supplications of millions and millions of Muslims worldwide. Let me note that the reason I say millions rather than billions is because of the 1.5 billion Muslims worldwide out of a 7 billion worldwide population. I sincerely wonder how many Muslims take the time out to make dua and observe their 5 a.m. for salah. Just like a man who works for his employer, he will not receive a bonus or his salary unless he works hard for his employer. This is the same situation as our deen. If you do not work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't do what he has ordered us to do, and don't desist from what he has forbid us to do, and don't stop at the boundaries he has set, and don't accumulate the iman as it should be, then why should he grant us victory? The Muslim Ummah of today seems preoccupied, preoccupied by this dunya. Referring to the hadith I mentioned earlier, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that we would be large in number, yet our enemies would fear us no more as long as we fell in love with this dunya and feared death. What do you see in this day and age? I see Muslims aspiring to be rappers rather than aspiring to have the character of our beloved prophet. I see Muslim girls wearing skin tight jeans and caked up in makeup rather than. Sorry. Um, mimicking Beyonce rather than becoming the pearls of Islam our dean talks about. I see Muslims attending clubs of alcohol and all sorts of fitna, deeming it to be acceptable just because pro-Palestinian rappers are performing. I see Muslims missing this salah, thinking that because they are protesting out on the streets they become acceptable and become exempt. I see Muslims sharing music videos on the internet which can be classed as soft porn. And I see Muslim men and women rubbing shoulders with disbelievers of the opposite sex, swaying side to side, singing songs about freeing Palestine. But where will this really get us? The only thing happening in these affairs is that we are placing our two feet in the hellfire and receiving dawah from the disbelievers, which is more dawah than we've ever given in our whole lives. It is us who end up singing and dancing and smoking and drinking before any of them end up taking their shahada. I'd just like to inform you as well that I've only started gaining Islamic knowledge a year and a half ago and when I see those who have been brought up with Islamic knowledge who have known verses and verses of the Quran and multitudes of knowledge about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions and knowledge of all the great scholars of the past yet fail to use it or fail to apply it and act like, F- act, sorry, act like disbelievers in every aspect of their lives it truly saddens me. Why do we all share all the knowledge we have except for that which is Islamic? Have cats got our tongues? Do we fear people more than we fear Allah? 
as a warning and as a reminder, it is reported that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever is asked about a knowledge that he knows about and then hides it and keeps it away, he will be bridled on the day of judgment with a bridle of fire. Moving to the second question I'd like to pose is what is the solution for helping our ummah? Allah says in Surah Nur, verse 55, Allah has promised those young who you be- sorry, Allah has promised those among you who believe and do righteous deeds that he will certainly grant them succession to the present rulers in the land as he granted it to those before them and that he will grant them the authority to practice their religion which he has chosen for them and he will surely give them in exchange a safe security after their fear provided they worship me and do not associate anything in worship with me but whoever disbelieves after this they are the fasakun Allah also says in Surah ar rad verse 11 Verily, never will Allah change the condition of a people until they can change it themselves with their own souls. Reflect on these verses, my brothers and sisters. The Quran is our medicine, our manual, and our guidance, so use it. Our beloved Prophet ﷺ also tells us, When you start a trade that involves usury, when you grab hold of a cow's tail and limit yourselves to farming and abandon jihad, Allah will send, send upon you humiliation from which you will not be delivered until you attain to your faith. This is the humiliation of today. And the solution is right in front of us. Singing emotional songs won't help Gaza. Dancing with face paints and waving flags won't help Gaza. Next one, inshallah, I'm traveling to Gaza to deliver aid and that will not help Gaza. Allah is the controller of all affairs. Everything happens by his will. So if you really want to help Gaza, then let us return to our deen and our sunnah. You're the emirs of your home, so be examples and spread the knowledge of Islam and return to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rather than becoming Lupe Fiasco's little wains and Naji Adrams, let us become Umar bin Khattab, Khalid ibn Walid, Khalid ibn Walid and Khadijas. Make the deen at your forefront of your priorities, rather than making this dunya your biggest concern and we will see the difference. I thank you all for listening, and everything that I have said that is right is from Allah, and everything that is wrong is from myself and Shaitan. Jazakallah khair. Okay, and just like a lot of other from all of us.